Hello everybody and welcome back to lesson 18 reliability and testing methods. Reliability refers to the consistency and stability of measurement or research instrument. It indicates to the degree to which the results of an assessment are dependable, consistent and reproducible under the same conditions. Under the same conditions or under the same circumstances, a reliable measure provides a consistent result which provide which is reproducible results or we can measure multiple times and get consistent results in general reliability is indications of consistency of the scores across different time across different observers or multiple observers we can say across different parts of the test itself using reliable instrument is particularly very important in research because if a measure is not reliable it is not trustable and the result or we can say the finding of the research cannot be acceptable one of the criteria to publish a research article in a journal is to use a reliable instrument in general reliability is very crucial to accept any neology for example, if we consider this video discussion, if this video discussion is not consistent with another video discussion about reliability, so we cannot accept this video discussion. A reliable measuring instrument does contribute to validity, but it cannot assure, however, it cannot assure the validity. Let's look at the three scenarios. If we consider these dots as a scores, so in the, in the first cases, the dots are close to each other, so it is consistent and it is reliable, and they are found in the inner circle, so it is accurate, so we can say both reliable and valid. In the second scenario, as you see, the dots are close to each other, so it is consistent and it is found outside the inner circle, so it is not valid. So we can say they are consistent but not valid. And in the third uh, cases, the dots are far apart with one another, so it's not consistent, and it is out of the inner circle, and it is not valid. So we can say not reliable and not valid. Once we uh, discussed about the reliability, the basic concepts of uh, the reliability, the next uh, topic is methods to test reliability. So we have to know we have to know those methods just to test the reliability. There are four basic methods to test about the reliability. The first one is test retest reliability. Second is alternative or equivalent. We can say sometimes parallel form reliability. Third is inter-rater reliability. And the fourth is internal consistency reliability. Again, internal consistency reliability is subdivided into two that is split half reliability and coefficient alpha let's discuss one by one the first method is the test retest reliability the test retest reliability involves administrating the same test or we can say single test to the same group of people or the same group of respondents at two different points in time and then correlating the scores which indicates the reliability. But here we have to notice the amount of time allowed between the measures allowed between the two tests is very critical. And the condition should be the same. The condition should be uh, the same. The shorter the time gap between the two tests, between test one and test two, that is, by the way, test one and test two are the same. So the shorter the time gap, the higher the correlation between the scores of the test or the results of the test, which indicates the higher the reliability. So we have to remember the time is very critical between the two test intervals. Let's take one example, conducting personality test for a single group twice with different time interval. So the correlation between the tests equals or shows the test, the test retest reliability. These types of tests, the test retest reliability is suitable, particularly for stable characteristics like personality, test of aptitude, and 
sorry but it is not suitable for a type of test like creativity learning and memory we cannot test using test retest reliability because these types of variable like creativity learning and memory are the dynamic characteristics or the dynamic attributes so we cannot conduct test retest reliability second equivalent or parallel form reliability this involves managing two different but equivalent forms two different but equivalent forms or content of a test to the same group of people with diff with the difficult level with the item difficult levels are similar so here there are important terms there are important terms in uh, equivalent or parallel form reliability there are two different but equivalent forms or equivalent tests we can say which is provided for the same group of respondent and their difficulty levels should be similar so there are certain procedures to conduct the equivalent or parallel form reliability the first one is we have to create large set of questions that address the same construct and then randomly divide the questions into two sets and then the third is administer both instruments to the same sample of the people and after that taking the samples or taking the scores then correlating between the two parallel forms is which tells us the reliability or is the estimates of the reliability this approach is very similar to the split half reliability actually we will discuss it later about split half reliability however the parallel forms are constructed so that the two forms can be used independent of each other and considered equivalent measures but in the case of split half we treat as a one form and after just collecting the data after taking the results we split into two unlike that of the equivalent parallel form so two versions of a math tests one with different numbers we we may change here the variable or the numbers but with similar difficulty levels are provided for a single group at a time and we correlate those two equivalent uh, tests and we get the reliability coming to the inter-rater reliability this assesses the degree of agreement between two or more raters or observers we can say examiners let's look at one uh, good example to show uh, or to better understand inter-rater reliability in a test system phase as uh, we know there are internal and external examiners or uh, we can say observers might evaluate a single student with the same form with the same predefined uh, criteria or parameters so the correlations of their rating the correlations of the results provided by the internal and external examiners shows or indicates the reliability so this is what we call inter-rater uh, reliability fourth internal consistency reliability it is a method of estimating whether different parts of a test are measuring the same variable or not this asks whether the items on a test measure the same underlying construct or a concept by the way this method is commonly used for scales or questionnaires with multiple items a concept having more than two items three and above items otherwise if the items if the number of items is one or two we cannot apply uh, the internal consistency reliability we cannot find the internal consistency reliability let's take one example if we have a 10 items depression scale internal consistency assess whether all the items are consistently measuring only depression only depression so the 10 items is more than uh, three items so we can uh, find the internal consistency reliability there are two methods uh, to find out the internal consistency reliability we can use the two methods that is the first one is a split half reliability and the second is a coefficient alpha which is the most common practice and which is the preferred one in a research society 
Let's start from the split half reliability. In the case of split half reliability, we just take the data. That is, this involves splitting a test into two halves after just taking the scores, after uh, collecting the scores or the results. We just split a test or the result into two halves by just taking the odd numbers and the even numbers, or we can divide by two. And correlating the scores between the halves indicates the split half reliability. Let's take one example. If uh, we have a 10 item questionnaire and we can randomly split into two sets of five items each, either by taking the own numbers or by taking 1 to 5 and 6 to 10, then we can correlate the scores from each half then which tells the correlation tells us the correlation tells us the split half reliability the higher the correlation between the two halves indicates the higher the reliability and the reverse is also true the reverse is also true these examples uh, try to show the split half reliability and the second is a coefficient alpha reliability is most frequently associated with multiple uh, multi-item scale we already said that it calculates the average of the coefficients from all possible coefficients of the split halves the difference between the coefficient alpha and the split half reliability is in the case of coefficient alpha it calculates the average of coefficients from all possible combination of a split halves but in the case of split halves we just take the correlation of only one possible combination either way we take the uh, odd and even or we just divide uh, the items into two randomly it is used to assess a summated scale of a total score uh, for a construct let's take one example that is the most known uh, measurement about uh, service quality dimensions that is uh, the servicual having the five dimensions which is developed by the uh, known author that is Parasurman. So it has uh, five dimensions. As you see, tangibility has uh, four number of items. So it has a reliability coefficient of 0.72. And the reliability has a number of items that is five, and it has a reliability coefficient of 0 0.83. As you see his, here, the reliability has uh, five items, and all the items under the reliability is measuring or uh, talks about the reliability they test the reliability they measure the reliability so all the possible combination of this split half this split half provides us a coefficient alpha which is 0 0.83 0 0.83 so in this case we can use by the way we can use spss and some software to calculate the coefficient alpha reliability moving to the last uh, section rule of thumb about the compact uh, alpha coefficient size so if the alpha coefficient uh, size is less than 0 0.6 so the reliability assessment is poor if it is between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 so we can say it is acceptable for exploratory research actually the range of the range of uh, alpha coefficient is between 0 and 1 which includes 0 and 1 whereas if it is between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 it is acceptable for uh, some research types like exploratory research and lower coefficient may be acceptable depending on the research objectives the research objectives matters by the way our objective of the research matters according to the research objective we may sometimes uh, accept the lower uh, coefficient alpha value for example if our objective is exploratory research and if it is between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 it is good actually the researcher generally in social science the researcher generally consider alpha 0.7 as a minimum threshold and if it is between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 so it, uh, it is excellent and if it is between 0 0.9 and 0 0.95 
it is somewhat high but if it is greater than 0 0.95 it is too high and it indicates the uh, our instrument has a redundant items our instrument has a redundant items or our measures has a redundant items and we have to avoid that redundant items this is the end of our today's discussion and thank you for listening and hopefully we will meet next time with another topic that is validity till then have a good time bye